So speaking is one of the most powerful thing we can do for our own personal brand, as well as to share our knowledge. And to me, I think one of the most important thing, amplify women's voices and leadership in the world. As a woman, we've all been to tech events and conferences, wish there were more speakers like us on stage or people who uh, look like us, sound like us, or maybe maybe even think like us. And this is why we're here today, I guess, to be equipped with the skills to get ready to go onto the stage, prepare a really good presentation, know how to engage your audience in a really good talk, and you know be the change that we want to see, bring diversity to the stages, because we know that the impact does not end on you going on stage. This is where it really begins. So I've been doing public speaking actually for 15 years now. I've spoken at numerous events in my career, client presentation, training workshops, moderating panels, speaking at conferences, and believe it or not, I still get really nervous and stage fright before I speak. So, you know, earlier on, we were talking about, you know, um, the challenges and what, what do you think, you know, what are some of these challenges that you have shared with the audience? And you might realize that they are, it's more common than you think. And if, for me, it is that tightness in the chest. I'm like, whew, I can't breathe. The queasiness in the belly, sweaty palms. The racing mind, that's the worst for me because I'm trying to grasp onto every word that I want to say and trying not to forget what is it I want to cover. And even right now, I'm like, I want to make sure I deliver the best content and make sure I share everything with everyone so they, you know, get everything that I had planned. And that sometimes throws me off a little bit and makes me really nervous. However, the largest obstacle that is holding women back is just this fear right, of public speaking. Some of you, I know you shared that your fear is actually of, um, you know, not knowing what to speak about or the content. But I think generally, um, the consensus is that there's that nervousness of going on stage, you know, maybe people looking at us and um, we were worrying how our performance could actually affect their opinion of us. But public speaking is actually a learnable skill like any others. And many of you here are developers. The same way you will pick up a new programming language, you know, learn a new tool. Um, we can go through the steps together today on how you can become a great speaker and take away some of the tips to you, for you to actually prepare for your next speaking gig. So by the end of this session, I'd like you to look at this room here, wait, this room, this room over here, and feel more confident and equipped to be a speaker and be really excited about presenting instead of fearful. We'll actually cover that in a little while. So we're going to start from step one. Step one, there are 10 steps to this, how to become an amazing speaker, and we're just at step one. So every presenter, every presentation needs to be prepared. And it does not matter whether it's a short talk or um, a keynote or you know a workshop, you need to prepare. And the first step is writing a story. So later, um, later lecture will be going through this um, storytelling structure in detail because that's how we are proposing that you can plan your technical presentation talk as well. But in the summary, in a nutshell, basically is introduce, introduce yourself, you know, what introduce the problem description you know, what are you solving for? Why should they be listening to you? Um, the solution that you've come up with, what is this hurdle that you overcome? The results of your solution, did it help your business achieve something? Did it help you achieve efficiencies? You know, what are the results of this that make um, this uh, sharing so useful for someone who's listening in? And the conclusion, as developers yourself, you know that you probably stand to learn a lot from um, the street depository and information is already available on the web from other developers before you. So think about the conclusion of the, pro um, of the project or the talk that you're presenting and share some of these learnings or even the challenges that you have because the next person who can, who listened to this talk could potentially take this off and idea something for themselves. So I think a great talk is one that makes people take action and not just listen and forget and go away. So well, after you prepare your, actually, it can come both way and concurrently, but pre preparing your technical presentation as well as writing your talk. But people who know me in person know that, you know, uh, probably don't believe I struggle with public speaking because I'm one of those naturally outgoing, chatty people. However, I could go on for hours. And um, for me, putting together a really short, succinct talk is actually where the um, pain point is for me as well. 
So I know my time is limited. I want to make sure I get all of my points across. Normally what I do, um, okay, so there are two techniques here that you can do. One is you can start to think through the areas you want to cover. So you can put down in bullet points the areas that you want to cover for this entire talk. Or for me, personally, I write my talk down word for word and I speak it, I write it as if I'm speaking it. So it helps me structure the flow of my thought as well. And I know that my writing voice and my speaking voice is actually different. The words that I use are different as well. Because writing, sometimes I use words that I struggle to pronounce. And so when I'm speaking, I might change out some of this word, simplify it, sentences that are clunky, that doesn't flow so well. I would also change it up a little bit. Also, a good presentation is not, you know, a war of words, you know, um, later when Lakshya is show, showing you what a good presentation to, should look like, it should never be a war of text because if somebody is reading off your presentation, they're not paying any attention to you. So in that same sense, when I'm writing a script uh, of the talk, I try to cover more than is what, on, what is on the screen. So just like now on the screen, you see, write your talk. But I actually have a lot of speaking points that I tell myself that I wanted to cover. And also, you know, how, unless you have an amazing memory where you can memorize word for word, Joey, for one, is has an amazing memory when it comes to events. So we prepare a script and she remembers everything. I'm terrible at that. So I normally have a bullet point after I've, I've done building up my story. And I just make sure I cover these points um, adequately. So two additional tips here. This is something that worked really well for me. Um, when I first started, I used to always print out cue cards. So I have them in my hand. And in my cue cards, there were two things that I always do. I indicate where I click to the next slide. So I have my clicker here. So on my cue cards, normally I have like either a little star or I draw two lines just to show that there's a break there. So I know when I get to um, this point, I need to click over to the next slide. And the other one is I know I speak really fast, especially when I get nervous. So sometimes I just put un like two underscore to tell myself, breathe, pause, give people some time to process that information as well. So next, creating supportive slides. This I was actually going to skim through super quickly, and I will because um, Lakshya will be covering this. But I'll just talk about some high-level points. One is pictures can speak more than a thousand words. And again, we're not necessarily saying that you need to work with pictures. But if you can show visuals of your demo, your screenshots, try and do that. But keep in mind, um, of course, that you, know, um, you, want to, you want to show them good content and not necessarily a wall of text. You know, we know that you know the more is written, the more attendees are distracted by it because they are reading it. And you don't want to also read off slides, right? That's a huge no-no. And we use text to highlight what we're talking about. It's not meant to be a repetition of our talk. So if you think you have to say that much, like if you have to cover, say, six points, think about maybe you could restructure it a little bit and turn it into two slides. You know, maybe this is about um, the process and this is about the learning instead of dropping everything into one slide. And I hope you heard what I said. Or were you just reading the six points on the slide of garbage that I put there? But anyway, another thing is the design and layout of your talk. You know, just be, consi um, be consistent throughout. Use the same font, use the same color, you know, try not to be too busy. Personally, I try not to use more than two fonts, um, size and, and font type, because after, after a while, it gets really difficult for people to process which is which. And then now you have a great topic, you have a great structure, and you have a great slide deck. It's all about practicing. And um, trust me, practicing is super, super important. You know, we say we know our talk, and sometimes I think we forget that we actually know what we're talking about. So you already know what you're speaking about because you wrote it. You are the subject matter expert. Trust yourself. You know you're going to be amazing. But the order of the slides, the structure of the talk, maybe they need to be practiced, especially if you haven't done it before. So here are a couple of methods to actually get to fluency besides just um, talking to yourself. One for me, what I really like to do is I record myself rehearsing, um, especially now that a lot of these events are virtual, I can really do that and know exactly what it's going to look like on the other side. So I record myself and see, oh, am I saying um, um too much? Am I pausing too much? I have a little note there that always tells me, look at the camera, because 
if I'm looking at a screen or actually I have extension screen, so I'm looking here, I'm not looking at you. So I actually have a little post-it notes that I stick on my laptop to always tell me, look at the camera. So, you know, you can record yourself and then you would know, oh, wow, I was looking all over the place except at the audience or um, I was using certain words a lot. So that is one way to review that. Another one is do a dry run without slides. So what sometimes I do is um, I... With, oh, actually, without the script, without the slides, I talk through the entire presentation because it helps me understand the flow and make sure that it sounds right in my head as well. And another one which I think is like super, super helpful is find friends to actually listen to. I'm not just talking about, you know, um, random friends or your neighbor next door, but um, maybe if you're a data scientist, look for another data scientist. You know, find somebody you can practice with, perhaps one in your own tech domain, and see if they understand your presentation need clarity in any area, or maybe if they could also tell you um, to add in additional points that would make your presentation even better. And then I would suggest you go speak to somebody who is not in your same domain, because sometimes when you're with peers, you can go too deep. So find somebody who's maybe outside your domain and see if they understood at a minimum what your talk is trying to achieve. Because even if they didn't understand the code, they should get the value that you brought um, by sharing this topic. Next one, work with your weaknesses. Okay, you don't have to work against perceived weaknesses, but you know, work around them and with them. And what I mean is, for example, avoiding words that you have a hard time pronouncing. I know I speak very fast, and I know that sometimes when I speak really fast, I don't pronounce my words really clearly. So I try to pick words that are simpler so I don't end up, um, you know, um, tripping over my own word. It's not meant to be a tongue twister. So another thing, um, this is more relevant probably in a live event. Um, there are a lot of people who go in and go like, can everyone hear me? Okay, and then they don't use the mic, and then as they talk, they get softer and softer, so for example. So if you know that you're a soft, you know, have a softer voice or you know, you're maybe not so confident speaking, sometimes you tend to get softer as you go along, use a mic. Know what your weaknesses are and work with them. Or for example, if you know you have an accent, I insist I don't have one, despite what everybody says. You know, if you or you are speaking, um, you're traveling to somewhere to speak in an event and it's, it's not your native language or so on, you can consider, you don't have to, but you can consider addressing it during your introduction. Like, hi everyone, I'm Janice. You know, I came here from Singapore. Um, you know, thank you so much for having me here. It sets a bit of context as well. A tech talk is not really a test in your Oxford Eng English, but, you know, setting the context might help people become more accommodating as well. Another one is checking the setup. So, you know, the day is finally there, you arrive at the event location, you're ready to go and Wi-Fi is not working, the laptop won't plug in, your demo is not showing. There could be a million things that could go wrong. So, super important, check your tech setup. There are a lot of things that could go wrong and we normally say that, you know, for um, presenting at an event, although the organizer might have a spare laptop there, bring your own. You know, just bring your own just in case. You never know. And if you're presenting on your own laptop, because many of you are, you know, are tech presenters, you might have your own demo that you want to share. Then and make sure that you find out, are they using like VGA or HDMI cable? Do, you, do they have adapters? Do you need to bring your adapters? And um, another thing, your screensaver, make sure it's not going to turn on. Turn off all your notifications. Nobody's going to pop up midway and go and make small chat with you while, you know, a hundred people are looking at your screen, for example. Another pitfall that a lot of people forget is make sure that your laptop is charging and plugged in. So check on that. If you have a clicker, make sure it's working. Battery is there. If you have a microphone, test it, especially like, you know, whether it's a handheld microphone or lapel microphone, you know, um, make sure that you get that all sorted out before your presentation. And another thing about the presentation as well is your presenter notes. For me, presenter notes are really important because I have them in point forms and I try not to miss my points. And um, if you have them, do you have it ready? Is it on the screen? Is it visible to you? For me, especially for virtual events, it's a top tip. I love it. I put my presenter notes right under the, the camera. So if I were to forget a point or if I wanted to make sure I have everything covered, I just glance down for a little while and I can pop back up again. You know, I just did that really quickly and it's quite subtle, but my notes is just right by the camera. So it doesn't look like, you know, I'm turning away and um, in another place altogether while I'm trying to get my shit together. So, and the more events that you go to, you know, the, the more you get into this drill. So don't feel overwhelmed by all of these things that we're saying. 
But you can have a little checklist. I used to have a little checklist on the things that I need to bring to an event. Um, and especially if you have demo, I just want to make sure that um, the Wi-Fi works. Although I'll, later when Laksha is sharing the presentation, we're actually going to talk you out of trying to do a live demo if you can. Then the other point that's really important is the stage itself. Um, if it's possible, go earlier. If you can go you know, a day earlier or just early in the day before the audience arrive, um, go and check out the space. Make yourself familiar with the stage. The more comfortable you are with the stage and the surrounding um, and how the place is laid out, the less um, anxiety there will be. And you have time to actually try out your speech without having the attendees being there. See what is the space you can use. Do you have to stay in a restroom? Can you walk around the stage? I'm on a live event. I can walk about one meter. You know, how much space do I have? And also want to find out whether, you know, your the lightings are right for you. Sometimes you I'm sure we've all been to events where the presenter has like half the body covered by the present um, the presentation slide lights. You want to avoid that. So go a little bit early and familiarize yourself with the stage. Are there certain areas you shouldn't walk into or when you walk into there, there's a feedback or the light is in your eyes. So go a little bit earlier. Number five, relax. I know you're like, we're really nervous. We're really excited. We're a little bit frightened and it's normal. Everybody feels that. I was saying that I've been speaking for 15 years and I'm still nervous today. So just take some time before the talk to relax. We're going to go through some tips here. They're relaxing, calming, and hopefully also help you become more successful on stage. Find the one that works best for you because we're not saying that what we're um, teaching you next is the Bible. But find a method that works for you. So one of it is breathing technique. So, you know, calmly breathe, count to 10 during your natural breath. Do many deep breaths, walk around, maybe be silent. Maybe you don't want to be around people before you speak because maybe that makes you nervous. And maybe you don't want to be trying to memorize your script at the last minute. And you just want to take a moment for yourself to calibrate. So breathing techniques, you know, find one that works for you and you can try that. Another one, this is um, the scientific effects of power posing. And as women, maybe you've heard of this um, many times before, it's made popular in recent years as well, talking about how we can do more power posing to try and build that confidence and you know um, get into that space. So instead of you know kind of um, being in a almost like a self-defeated pose of being really nervous, or like, oh shit, I'm so and I'm so anxious right now. How do you get a lot more confident with yourself? So these are some of the poses. And if you're at home, nobody's watching, you can get up and do it together with me. So think about getting into these power poses for like two to five minutes. You know, you can put your hands on a hip and just walk around. You're like, all right, this is going to be awesome. Um, I can do this. This is going to be awesome. You know, I feel so good today. This is going to be awesome. You know, you try to do that. It's okay to be silly. It's, nobody's looking. Find a little quiet room, do this power poses two to five minutes. And trust me, you actually feel a lot more empowered after that. And while you're doing that, think positively. Visualize, your, visualize yourself giving that really successful, really amazing speech. So don't go into power pose going, oh shit, this is, I'm so nervous. Oh, this is so hard. Why did I get myself into this again? Not that. You're going like, I can do this. I'm going to go be out there and be awesome. I'm so excited to be a part of this room. I can't believe I got invited. Yes. So the next one is the power of music. A lot of people have go-to songs, calming songs, energizing songs. So think about what works for you. And maybe you have a go-to song that every single time you present, this is like your, you know, your moment. You play that song, it gets you psyched up and you're ready to go. For me, actually, one of the best tips is um, I actually don't like music because it's dis it distracts me a lot. So for me, and again, I'm saying this point because it can be anything and find one that works for you. So for me, one of the best tips that was given to me was actually um, a friend who was telling me that the fear that I'm having, the nervousness, the anxiety, actually is the same emotion as excitement. And in our brain, excitement and fear triggers the same chemical reaction. So the feeling is the feeling that we can control. We just need to kind of um, reframe what we are, what we think we are feeling. So every single time I feel nervous or afraid, I tell myself, I'm really excited about this. So if you actually see me before I go on stage for an event, I am ridiculously excited. I go and I'm like, 
Oh, hey, I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Hey, great, you know, this, what a wonderful audience. Great room, I'm super excited, you know. Let, let's do this. And I'm saying this because I'm nervous, but I'm psyching myself up. So when I got on stage, I'm like, hey, everybody, you know, so glad to see you here today. We're going to be talking about, and try that, you know, that fake it till you make it um, energizing thing. Sometimes I do um, some like star jumps for good measure before I actually go on stage. Another one is introducing yourself. Um, so now we're talking about pre-stage and now we're getting on stage. The audience is eager to know who you are. You can, um, you know, you can introduce yourself, make it a little bit short and sweet. Lakshya will be covering that in a presentation deck later, so I'm gonna skip this part a little bit. But I'll talk about um, the tangible, um, the the I guess you know the software part, not so much the the slide deck. So think about what you wear for the talk. You don't want to look like you're wearing a costume, right? So if you're going for a tech conference and then you wear a full suit with a coat, yeah, everybody knows that you know you're first time, right? That newbie in the room. <laughs> so while, you know, wearing what you're most comfortable in is sometimes what people tell you, personally, I think it's a really bad advice. So you don't see speakers going on stage in their yoga pants or in their PJs, right? So think about what um, is professional and appropriate for you to wear. However, think about authenticity too. You should, you should also dress comfortably because, for example, um, you're a person who wears sneakers, then you don't want to wear four inch heels and present your technical presentation you know in your tight skirt and four inch heels you're not comfortable and if you're not comfortable it is going to show in your presentation you might be adjusting your top a little bit pulling your skirt a little bit tripping a little bit while you're walking around for example you don't want that the focus is on your presentation and think about you know what you wear don't let what you're wearing take away from what you are actually speaking about and also, these days we do a lot of virtual events. Another thing to think about is um, what the colors you're wearing, you know, is it too colorful, um, too much going on? And if you're doing a virtual event, just avoid stripes. It just doesn't show up well on the screen. And another thing to think about when we dress for the occasion as well is, again, what mic are you using? If they're putting a lapel mic for you, is there a place they can clip onto? Are you wearing something a little bit too low to be clipped onto? Uh, do you have a collar? Or where's the wire going to go? Is there a place that you can clip onto? If it's a dress, do you have pockets you can drop the battery pack into? Or is the waistband strong enough? Or are you wearing a two-piece so the wire can go down the back of your shirt and tuck on the back of your jeans, for example? So so think about what you're wearing and find out what is the um, what what are you going to be using there. For example, if it's a handheld, maybe not so complicated. And then um, this other one is a tip, especially for um, panels. So I've been to events before where I you know I'm wearing a dress and then I go there and everybody's on high stools. And I'm like, oh no, this is not very appropriate because I got to sit in this like weird angle to make sure that I'm not showing what I don't want to show people. So think about uh, think about asking the um, the organizers like, oh, if this is a panel, like, is it um, what's the seating? Is this like um, low couch? Is this like a high stool? So you can think about what is appropriate. You know, will it be flattering what you're wearing um, on a low on a low couch, or will it be showing things you don't want people to see? Then another thing is you want to make an impression, right? So when you're on stage, use open, friendly, calm body language. When um, If people have already introduced you, you don't need to introduce yourself. So earlier on, if you notice, Joey make the introduction for me. I didn't jump in and take another 10 minutes to introduce myself. They're here to hear, they're, you are here to hear what I have to share, not to learn who I am. So you know, think about um, that first impression. Maybe if somebody has already introduced you, Go straight into your point and don't definitely don't do a whole biography and make long speeches about something not relevant to the topic. Another one, owning the stage. Okay, so this is a little test that we're going to do. So if you look at this picture, guess what color represents words, which percentage um, represent body language, and which percent um, represents tonality. And what do you think is most perceived in a communication? You can make some guesses. And 
here's the answer. So if you look at this, you notice that words make up 7% of communication. We're not saying that the content is not important, but we're saying that there's so much more to it. Like if, um, if you avoid eye contact and um, throughout the whole presentation, you were just looking down at your deck and reading off your slide deck and clicking off to the next slide, it's going to show. It doesn't matter what you're going to say, they're just going to be staring at you, staring at your computer and never looking up. So think about that. And if you're speaking monotonously throughout the entire thing, people don't know when to actually focus or when is something important because you're just going on the same tone at the same speed throughout the whole half an hour presentation on the same thing. So think about when you want to actually emphasize on the words. It can be speaking a little bit louder. It could be giving a little bit of a pause to show them how important it is. So having that in mind it is really important nonverbal communication. So think about how you can insert that in. Pregnant pauses are pretty awesome. Well, another one is don't hide. And this happens a lot for developers presentation, especially because you're behind your laptop and doing a demo. Um, if there are areas like, for example, when you're doing your introduction and you know presenting the problems and um, talking about your solution, you don't necessarily need to stand behind um, the podium. You could walk around. So you can hold onto the microphone, walk around, face your audience, don't necessarily need to hide behind the screen. Gesture. You know, you can gesture what you're talking about. You don't have to, you know, just stand there and just be this um, toy soldier, hands by your side. Don't fiddle around excessively as well. This is actually the reason I like to use a handheld microphone because then one of my hand is not moving all over the place. And then maybe I have another one to gesture or plus I'm holding a mic and a clicker. My hands cannot be, you know, going too crazy. I can maybe point to something to emphasize a point, but it's never you know, going to be like all over the shop. Another one is moving. I guess for virtual events, it's really hard for me to emphasize this, but think about you know, when somebody is on a stage and they pace from one side of the stage to a different side of the stage. If they keep, pace, if they keep pacing, it's very annoying because you, you, you kind of like come focus, they're just like prancing around. So don't do that. If you can stand steady on both legs, don't just like, you know, slouch. It shows everything. Body language shows so much. But if you want to make a point, you could potentially say, you know, okay, we started this project from here. It does this, 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 this. And over time, this is what we, you know, have achieved. And you can move to different part of the stage, perhaps to make a point. But don't just move excessively unnecessarily. It's very distracting. Another one is connecting to the audience. And earlier on, we shared that, like making the eye contact. You'll always find one or two people who are maybe nodding and smiling at you. Find those people who are friendly faces. And you can always zoom back into them again and smile and nod at them. Show that engagement with the audience. And you know, for myself, I find it difficult sometimes making eye contact. So I tend to scan kind of midway across the room. So instead of all the way at the back of the room, it's so obvious. I kind of like midway across the room, just like scanning through, smiling at people, nodding. And, um, make, I, and then I will look at their forehead or their nose for a little while and just smile at them. and and that helps me keeps my nerves away. If you don't have the nerves that I do, look at them in the eye, smile at them, nod at them, and look for some friendly faces. You can look at, you know, you can always avoid the ones that's always like frowning at you. Like, what is she talking about? So next one, your voice is an instrument. So speak loud, speak slow. Um, speak louder and slower because it makes you sound a lot more confident. So if you're actually just kind of like half whispering and um, a little bit uh, nervous, it's going to it's going to show. So when you're practicing, speak loudly and confidently and it will make you sound um, a lot more certain of what you're sharing as well. And also, again, early on, we were talking about, you know, um, recording. So that's actually an easy one. Even if you don't do a video, you could always just turn on your phone record function, talk through the entire thing and then listen back to yourself like, oh, yeah, what was I? Maybe too fast, a little bit too slow. Train yourself. Practice and record. And we're getting to like point eight of 10. Don't panic. No matter how prepared you are, there will always be situations. Make sure you're prepared for, for that. But um, your audience is really your friend. Just know that everybody in the audience wants you to succeed. They are really in favor of you. Everybody in your audience wants you to give a good talk because they are there to see you give a good talk. They are not here to see you fail. So no matter what happens, breathe. Collect yourself. If you're getting a little bit nervous, breathe. There is this um, tip that I that I really like. 
um, if I forget my lines and I'm trying to think of what to say, I might just grab a glass of water. So we were talking about, so there's a little tip there. So if you're on stage, have a bottle of water, maybe a glass of water nearby. And if you find yourself being a little bit phased, forgot your point, take a moment to collect yourself. Drinking the water is a very neat trick. Another one, blackouts happen, tech, electricity, Wi-Fi, and so on. Say worst case scenario, the, the slides are not going to work. You're on stage, you have a microphone, nothing is there. You're just you and the stage. You're prepared. You've prepared the talk. You are the subject matter expert. Have confidence with yourself. If the tech is not going to work, just, just drop it. It's fine. You can still go in there and talk about what you built, how you built it, what have you achieved, who you are and take maybe the opportunity to engage with the audience. Don't give up, don't stand there for half an hour trying to fix the technical problem, for example. So think about what you can do and maybe even prepare for worst case scenario. And stay on track. This one um, is very important. I mean, we've actually seen events before where all of a sudden a fire alarm went off or there are people in the audience who keeps talking really loudly, for example. You can, um, there are two ways you can do this. One is you can either address it, like for example, the fire alarm went off. You don't have to talk over the fire alarm. Just wait, just smile and wait. And then just not smile. Everybody knows what's going on. You can just smile and wait it out. And when the fire alarm is over, continue. But let's say if you have an audience who is speaking very loudly, like really obviously and rudely, you could potentially just pause and just look at the person and just pause. And either the organizer or the audience themselves might just, you know, quieten down. So that's another way of doing it. And then um, questions. I think this is the part that could be a little bit scary for some people where you get asked really tough questions. Um, you don't necessarily have to answer every single question right away. Don't be afraid to say, let me come back to you later. I was like, oh, okay, um, I can take, uh, we can take this offline and I can meet you by the stage once we finish this session. So don't be worried about actually addressing these questions at a later stage. And then wrap it up. You know, you've delivered your content. It's time to wrap up your talk, conclude, summarize, summarizing your talk, sharing the tick the key takeaways and a call to action is super important. And last but not least, share your contact details. And oh, handling questions as well. So if you're answering the questions, um, again, you know, keep it to keep it to only a few. You want the majority of your talk to be about what you're sharing and maybe keep two to three questions at the end. If you leave too much time for Q&A, you're actually taking away the opportunity to share um, your project. But if then if you don't give them time to ask questions, then you, know, you might not be able to take away some um, things that you could do better for your own project as well. And then follow up after the talk. So it's time to leave the stage, but your job, um, you know, there's one last step that you can take. It's a great time for networking. Take the time, meet other speakers, thank the organizer, be available for the attendees. If you can't, maybe tell them, I'm sorry that I can't stay later. However, you can reach me on my social media here or on GitHub here. And last but not least, enjoy yourself. So here is a summary of everything that we've covered. So number one, write a story, create great slides, practice, 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 check your setup, relax, Introduce yourself, own the stage, don't panic, wrap things up nicely so people remember what you say, and follow up after the talk. Give them a way to engage or reach you. And one last slide here, actually, because with so much virtual events that's going online, we just want to make sure we cover this. So, you know, you make sure you've got like good quality web camera landscape mode, don't do the portrait mode thing, whether you're using your phone or your laptop, your background, is it too cluttered? Are there too many things? Do you want to remove some of these objects? Are you in a place where people are walking behind you? Do you have an overhead fan casting shadows behind you? Lighting, is it too bright? Is it too dark? I actually have a ring light in front of me so that it gives me you know, sufficient lighting to like light up my face. If not, my room is a little bit too dark. And then um, eye contact. You know, you want to position this at the eye level. I could very well be, you know, somewhere here or looking up or, you know, looking down. A lot of the presenters look down when they're doing virtual events and it's really uncomfortable. So try and be at eye level, look into the camera, remember to give people eye contact, even though it's just that little dot on your screen, do that. And um, 
last uh and uh, sorry so that's for images and also clear your desktop in case you have to toggle between your screens and demo and for sound quiet background try to make sure there's no echo and ambient noises if not you can always put on the headphones and make sure your devices are silent so before i came into this i turned on i turned off my google home which seems to always be listening to me as well and i turned off all the alarms on my phone turn off all the notifications make sure everything is silent and won't interrupt your talk and of course you know configure your audio settings in device and in virtual event software when i was coming in as well you know my device was wanting to use a certain camera the virtual platform was using another mic or another headset. So you try to configure all this, be there about 15, half an hour ahead with the organizer to get that figured out. So that's it. It's all about you taking the leap now. You know that speaking is a skill that can be learned today and you can definitely try it out. So take the leap, go on stage, find a community meetup, you know, find a conference. There are a lot of call for speakers. Put your name in the hat. Joey actually will be sharing later on how you can stay connected with us and you perhaps even join one of our open mic nights. So you'll be amazing. Trust yourself. Thank you.